So welcome to the first edition of Tim and Belthy in Bed. Today I want to talk about some beliefs that I have that might surprise some subscribers. Beliefs that do not seem like particularly liberal or progressive, I guess, but are kind of outliers. Um, these are beliefs that don't really fit in with how my subscribers might see me. So I thought I would describe a few of those for you guys. So the first belief I'd like to describe is the fact that I believe in the death penalty in certain circumstances. The example that I like to use is Anders Breivik, who is a Norwegian person who shot about 50 people. There was a story not long ago that Anders Breivik was complaining because his jail cell did not have enough television channels and he did not have enough games on his console. And he was pissed off about that. And I thought, I would prefer, instead of this guy sitting in prison wondering about video games and television channels, I would prefer that this fucking guy be dead. Because he killed 50 motherfucking people. He's a complete pile of garbage and he's a piece of shit. Why does he deserve to sit in a jail cell wondering what TV channels he wants to watch? There's 50 people who will never get the chance to watch a fucking TV again. And he gets to just sit there and, and think about how he's going to live out his 21 years, I think it is, in the Norwegian system. That's a fucking joke. And it's not very liberal of me, and it's not very progressive. But the spiteful part of me, the part of me, well, not just spiteful, but is weighing one life versus 50. You know, what 50 lives could have been doing at that point when Anders Breivik was in his jail cell, thinking about what TV channel he wants to watch. What those 50 people might have been wondering at that point, but they don't get a chance to wonder. And we know what Anders Breivik did. We know why he did it. We know how he did it. There's, it's completely cut and dry. What rehabilitation could there possibly be for Anders Breivik? What's the point in keeping him around? What's he going to do with his life? There's no redemption for someone who killed 50 people. I'm just sorry, you know. I think that fucking guy should have been executed. The next one is that Islam is not a religion of peace. And I feel like this is a very, very mundane thing. Pe but people might not know that I think that Islam is not a religion of peace. Because I think that doesn't make any fucking sense at all. I don't think there is any religion of peace. And, I mean, people always bring up the example of Jainism, which I guess is like the religion that they say is peaceful because there's not much violent stuff, if any, in their texts. And honestly, I don't know much about Jainism or what they believe, but I do know that it's kind of peaceful. But I'm sure somebody out there somehow could find a way to commit violence in the name of Jainism. But I totally, 100%, in this situation, agree with neuroscientist Sam Harris and New Atheist Idol that it's much easier to justify violence in the name of Islam than Jainism. That's a fact. Yes, it definitely is. That is very, very, very true. But when we get into the whole Christianity versus Islam debate, I mean, that's not for the purposes of this video, so I'm not going to get into that now. But religion of peace? Like, no. Not at all. The next thing is, I have no problem saying that Muhammad was a pedophile. Muhammad is not a holy man to me. Muhammad is just a guy. He's a guy who had an underage wife. I don't fully know, because I haven't looked into it, the relationship between him and that underage wife. Some people say he didn't sleep with her, some people say she did. Uh, that was kind of the system at the time. But what difference, you know, does it really make to me whether he slept with her or not? He was married to an underage girl, and that's just the fucking fact. Who knows what the fuck he could have done? He was, like, basically, like, a warlord and a cult leader and all that kind of bullshit. So he could have gotten up to just about anything. So, I mean, and what am I doing? Slandering somebody who's been dead for, like, hundreds of years? And he's not my holy man. I don't think that he's blessed in any particular or significant way. 
So, what skin off my nose would it be if I said he was a pedophile? None. And if he'd abused an underage girl? Sure. He also started a cult and started a religion and it turned into Islam. Fine. And I also think you should be able to draw Muhammad. Because he's not a holy man. He's just a guy. You can draw anybody you want, can't you, Belthy? Yes, you can, Balthazar. You can draw anyone. He agrees. I would say I'm still a fan of Richard Dawkins. I think that he was disastrous, or is disastrous, he's not dead yet, when it comes to, like, cultural things. Especially, like, pop culture stuff, because he'd always be on Twitter being, like, real fucking confused about just... You know, pop events or, like, things that were happening. Like, oh, why? And, and, like, campus universities and stuff. He'd always be complaining about that shit. And it would always just be, like, this old man who's kind of out of touch, wondering what the fuck is going on. Being like, oh, why these young children today? They don't know what's going on. It's not like my generation. We used to be challenged and yada, yada, yada. And, like, oh, they're all being coddled and all that crap. He just sounded like this old guy. But when he took on... For example, Wendy Wright, the creationist lady, and in all of his debates, he was fucking awesome. And when he talked to that dude who, in the UK, or he's always defending, I can't remember his fucking name, but he's always like defending Muslims and Islam and stuff. He took on that guy, and that guy mentioned the flying horse, and then Richard Dawkins cracked a joke about the flying horse. That was fucking awesome. Because that's absurd. He believes in a flying horse. Like, he literally believed in a flying horse. Fuck that. That's stupid. I think that was awesome. And Christopher Hitchens, I think he was completely fucking wrong in the Iraq War. He just... I just did not agree with his ideas on foreign policy. I think they were absolutely fucking disastrous. And it was weird, because he seemed like he was a lot smarter then those views would have you think. Uh, some people probably already know this about me, but I don't believe in blocking people. And the reason I don't believe in blocking people is because I want them to be able to have conversations about things. And I also think if people insult me, I, all I need to do is just not bother caring. And that's about it. And I know there are a lot of people who are very concerned with negative comments and being attacked and, and all this kind of stuff. And I'm not really that concerned about that for me, but I am concerned about it for other people who are legitimately worried about that. And in that way I can empathize. But I don't know. I don't believe in blocking or shutting off debate. I think it should just be open, frank, and it should continue, even if it involves a lot of ugliness. I believe in you know, freedom of expression on my channel. However, I also know that it's other people's choice to block, and I'm not going to judge it unless that person is being hypocritical in the way that they apply it. For example, Dave Rubin saying, I'm all about free speech. I'm the free speech guy. I'm all about the open dialogue. And then turning around and saying, these people I'm dialoguing with are dishonest. Block. No, if you care about open and free discussion and debate, you don't have caveats like that. That's why when I say I believe in free dialogue and open debate, I don't block anyone because I'm not I'm I don't limit it. I don't limit it based on what my commenters think about me or my videos or whether they think I'm shit or something. That is totally just up to them. They can decide that for themselves and I can choose to say you've got a point or shut up. <laughs> That's it. I didn't really like the second Godfather. I think it's overlong, nothing really happens in it, it's quite boring, and the backstory to the Godfather character himself was just so unnecessarily 
long and plodding. And it was long interludes with nothing really going on. And I kind of liked the third Godfather. And I couldn't understand why everyone was shitting on it so much, even though Sofia Coppola was annoying in that role. And Andy Garcia was not the best actor in that movie either, but it had that epic stuff going on um, at the classical concert towards the end of the film that was pretty awesome. And there was a lot of other aspects to that movie that were pretty cool. And I just think it's a better movie than the second one. I, I can't figure out what's so great about the second one. Except, like, the final scene, which is awesome. But my favorite Godfather is Godfather 1. So that's it for now, because those are ones that I can get out of the way easily. If I start getting into other issues, like cultural issues, a relationship between the West and Islam, <coughs> wars, the nature of warfare and ethics and morality, it just gets way too nuanced and complicated, and I can't do it in a soundbite. So, these are views that are not very nuanced, and that you don't have to think very hard about, so I can't be accused, I guess, of doing apologia for them, but I think you guys will find a way to make it sound like I'm an apologist for something. I'm always apologizing for something, aren't I, Belthy? Isn't that true, Belthy? Huh? Just a big apologist. But... That's really all I can think of right now.